Happy glorious Friday, and what a Friday it is. It seemed like only yesterday that the media had made a fussy over Jesse. I don't like that it's being put out there in the media that this is a right. possible yeah. hate crime. Right. There are a lot of questions in this case, but I know Jesse Smollett is a really, really good guy. I just want justice to be served in this case. Mm -hmm. And the media has really cast so much doubt on his story, which I find so personally offensive. He's given a detailed account, an account that Chicago police have said has been consistent. He hasn't changed his story. They also said it's credible. Police have said that, and also that he has been very cooperative. Ah, and now today, it's, a, it's as if there's, like, no news on this guy. I hope he wasn't kidnapped by white supremacists. <laughs> Maybe he went on another midnight trip to Subway and was attacked by Jared. <laughs> I kid, he's too old for Jared. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. But I didn't, didn't he go to court? Wasn't he found guilty? It seems like one moment he was everywhere, but now he's gone, like rollerblades or a Cuomo. <laughs> so let's pay a visit to all of those in the media who first reported on that vicious racist attack and see what they're saying now. <laughs> oh, that's so predictable. You always come to crickets for this stuff. We knew the Smollett case was BS from the start. How about you tell that CNN lady, Brianna Keeler, to stop eating my friends? She ate my cousin last week. Shout out to Will Kane, by the way. That was interesting. He's a big fan of Will Kane. All right. It's true. They buried the story like it was a friend of Hillary Clinton. That's because when the media loves the news, they scream it from the hilltops. But when the story exposes their bias and idiocy, they hide it like Brian Kilmeade's bald spot. Speaking of bald spots, how did The View handle it today? It's not, you know, Kamala Harris's fault or Joe Biden's fault or Cory Booker's fault or anybody's fault that their natural reaction was to empathize with somebody who we all at first thought was a victim it's of a Twitter's hate crime. It's Twitter's fault anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not their fault, it's just a natural reaction. Yeah, a natural reaction if you wanted it to be true because you invested so much in the notion that America is full of white male racists. But this is their M.O. Turn the news faucet on, then magically turn it off because the media is hoping the same people who easily bought the Smollett hoax when they championed it won't find it now that their own feverish fantasies turned out to be false. Now, I'm going to tell you the story of Smollett from the press-eyed view. When the story first broke, we were all sitting around a green room betting how many Twizzlers Dana Perino could eat. <laughs> 400. <laughs> and we were all thinking the same thoughts. I wonder if Jessica's water broke. <laughs> anyway, that she wasn't pregnant then. Actually, <laughs> we all knew Smollett was lying because the lie was too much on the nose like a hysterical plot point from Law and Order. But we couldn't see it just yet because we were too afraid of being called racist by other people in the media, even though we knew the story was as plausible as seeing Brian Stelter at Soul Cycle. <laughs> because what Smollett concocted was the exact kind of story the media preferred and demanded. It fit their lurid assumptions of a systemically racist, evil white America. See, it's not a hoax if it reflects your own fantasies. It's like a psycho stalking a famous actress and convincing himself the actress has the same feelings for him. To him, it's not a fantasy. It really exists. And I should probably apologize to Kathy Bates. <laughs> Unfortunately for them, the media's need for racist hate crimes is like Xanax at The View. The demand far outweighs the supply. <laughs> Meanwhile, some scrappy local Chicago reporters bravely chased the hoax down. Rafer Weagle and Rob Elgus, they need to be commended. Weagle actually was criticized for going on Fox News to discuss the rapidly disintegrating hoax. And his defense? Fox was the only network to ask him to come on. No one else would. They were too scared that their own narratives would collapse. But what he was doing was real journalism. No wonder the legacy media didn't recognize it. But that's the good news about the press. The bad news, for every one of those guys, there are 300 Don Lemons. So why did the media fall for this? Well, you can't accept a ludicrous story like that unless you have two elements in place, a nickel bag and a bong. <laughs> I wish. Actually, you need to be primed for it 
and then you want it to be true. The priming consists of a repetitive, grim narrative pushed by outlets like CNN in which America's full of bigots. This false narrative was the table setting that served up whatever race hoax would pop up, and there were lots. Banana peels left outside, that had to be racist because only white people have access to fruit. <laughs> a rope at a race car garage, that was about as similar to a noose as a plate of fettuccine. Workout gear in an Oakland park also became a collection of nooses. Who knew that Jack LaLanne was a Klansman? And covered furniture became a man in a KK robe in a hood. Hey, who hasn't made that mistake before? Is that the grand wizard or a lazy boy recliner? <laughs> the media primed the environment so that any racist hysteria could become reality. Smollett, being the enterprising race grifting ba baiter, saw this as a perfect opportunity to enhance his career, and so he did. It's what narcissistic predators do. He could have gotten away with it, but his only problem, he's an idiot. He hired two black guys to play two white guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's not only a violation of cultural appropriation, but it's just terrible casting. <laughs> That's like casting Gwyneth Paltrow to play Rosa Parks. <laughs> and who's wandering around a frigid Chicago night holding rope and bleach? Angry penguins that are into bondage on their way to clean swimming pools? It makes no sense. <laughs> and perhaps the biggest improbability of all, what white MAGA heads would ever recognize Jussie Smollett? <laughs> He's asked to show his ID at family gatherings. And yet the media bought it all, because like a really bad drug dealer, they were getting high on their own <laughs> supply, feeding off their own race fantasies. It's as if they could believe in anything. Is the problem with your workers' comp claim is that you haven't been injured on the job? Our firm knows imaginary pain can hurt like a Burn yourself committing arson. That gas station should have warned you not to smoke. Did brothers you hired to pretend to beat you up testify it was staged after promising not to? That's an oral contract. We'll get your hoax money back. Call the law firm of Harris, Swalwell, and Schiff. And leave the lie to us. <laughs> I think the apple was a bit gratuitous, but okay. <laughs> now, the press also enjoyed acting smarter than you because they saw this crime coming, and they should have since they're the ones who created this Frankenstein monster. So when they got screwed by their own gullibility, they fell as silent as President Biden looking for his shoes in the fridge. <laughs> and if they were wrong about this, what else did they get wrong? COVID, immigration, letting Andrew Cuomo act like a freelance massage therapist. <laughs> the list is longer than a receipt from CVS. So, will the press learn a lesson from this? Uh, don't make me laugh. I have MSNBC for that. Let's welcome tonight's guest. She's so sharp, she's not allowed on inflatable raft. Host of Sunny, Sunny's Corner on Sirius XM Patriot, Sunny Johnson. Her show's on so early, birds. Let her have the worms. Fox and Friends co-host Carly Shimkus. He's my fourth favorite king behind Sugar, Candy, and Co. Fox and Friends weekend host Will Kane. And her wit is drier than your grandma's elbow in December. Fox News contributor Cat Tim. Sunny, thank you for coming dressed so festive. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. When this was going on, I just wanted to live inside your brain just oh. to know thought by thought what was <laughs> happening back in 2019. Um, I obviously more, I don't really even give a damn about uh, Jussie. I care about the media because when you go through all the facts of the story, you ask yourself, how could anybody believe this? What were your thoughts during this? I'm glad that if you were a part of black America, not the media, not Don Lemon, because for some reason it's like if Joy Reid or Don Lemon says something, that it is automatically black people feel that way. No, <laughs> it's not. That is not the case. <laughs> if you want to know how black people feel, then go ask Dave Chappelle. Yes. So when Dave Chappelle started talking about Juicy, yeah. that's how we were feeling. <laughs> right. That's where we were at. Yes. We were laughing. We were ridiculing. We were having fun. 
And I think that that where when you talk about like cancel culture and how people are afraid to talk uh, to speak up, black men were not afraid to speak up. Black men were calling this for what it was at the beginning. And because they were, they were called uh, sex, I mean, homophobic. They were, they were toxic masculinity. It was, it was something wrong with black men for laughing at what they obviously knew was a damn joke. Yeah. So, like, please, if just, we got to a point where you realize that Joy Reid and Don Lemon does not speak for us. Yeah. Then I think we could actually have better conversations because nobody looked at this like racism. We all looked at this as imbecilic nonsense. Yeah. And we spent very, very little time focusing on it. Yes. We came back to it today to laugh again, and then we left. <laughs> you know, like it, it is not as big of an issue for us as Don Lemon and Joy Reid would have you think it's it so is. So true. And so now this is gonna lead me into a sexist question, cats. Perfect. All right. Sonny brought up the point about the men versus women. And when I was watching the clips, it was only, only women. women, only women that were defending this. You couldn't find a male clip. Even Don Lemon was like a little hedgy. Well, he, he was for it and then he was kind of like, And tell Jesse threw him under the bus. Exactly. Jesse threw him under the bus, then he got mad. Yeah. You well, know actually, it was two white MAGA supporters who threw him under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a sexist comment, Kat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were probably all in their periods, right, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> well, they could never be president. <laughs> well, I agree with you on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, women can never be president because they'll be on their periods. All right. No, I'm being sarcastic, <laughs> crazy lady. I don't what? know. I didn't take it that way. OK, uh, what is your? Um, what what is your take on the media? I, look, I, look, I don't know women. I I don't know women. I, I don't know anything about women, even though I am one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but my take on the media, I think, is obviously this would be a great story where they'll be able to, you know, the, all of their notions that they already have, mm -hmm. their takes that they already have, they could just kind of insert it in. Like what are those things called with the Mad, mad libs. libs? Yeah. It was like a Mad Lib where they could just insert it as a Mad Lib, which and people they pump each other up. Right. So I think it's less about actually thinking about could this have really happened this way or like why would this person who's a TV star be getting his own subway and why would he, <laughs> why would he need subway that bad? They're not thinking about that. They're thinking about, you know, the views and the clicks and how to and then they try to one up each other right. and how hard they'll take it. Yeah, yeah. The subway thing was interesting, you yeah, know. Yeah, you was know, a yeah. He can't, he can't afford Uber Eats? Like, right. I... Yeah, I don't, know. So. I don't know. All right, Will. Yes, You're sir. in the media. I am. Just like I am. You look great, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, I can say that to <laughs> You agree with me? It's the women who fell for this, right? <laughs> I'm joking, a sexist would say. What do you make of the media response? You know, um, I think you nailed it, as long as we're trading compliments in your monologue. <laughs> thank you. Real thank you. nice. You made an OK um... sign. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. Oh, no. We'll, we'll, um, we'll have to blur it out. <laughs> I truly think it's all about narcissism. While you couldn't right. find perhaps male clips in the media, you could find male politicians. You could find none That's other true. than Joe Biden. And so what I think's going on is all about narcissism. And, and we talk about this concept of virtue signaling so much. Mm -hmm. I think the media is full of insecure people looking for external validation. Mm -hmm. And they cast narratives, stories at all times, and they cast themselves as the heroes of these stories. I am the virtuous character. I'm sitting on the set of Good Morning America denouncing racism. I am a good person filling this empty hole inside yeah. of myself with a microphone. I think that's a lot of what's going on, and they have to keep looking for these stories, as you point out. If it's not Jesse Smollett, it's Bubba Wallace, whatever it may be, to continue to be the, the hero of this story. Yeah, I think, and, and also, I, I have to say, uh, Carly, that it's like all, all uh, Jesse saw was uh, like like a trend that he could profit off of. It wasn't his fault, right? Yeah. He was just looking at what the media wanted. So well, a couple things. First, uh, not a sexist comment by you, uh, <laughs> because I, I'll be perfectly honest. When I remember when I got the news alert on my phone that said Jesse Smollett hate crime. The whole first of all, I said who's Jesse Smollett? I didn't <laughs> know who he was, and then I I mean I believed it because. I don't think anybody would ever think that you would stage a hate crime against yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's on, that's on him. Right. Like he's the one that de deserves the most criticism here. Um, but then when the news started coming out about the details and people started to defend him, that's when it got political and icky. 
-hmm. You know, and then there are so many other things about this um, whole trial, like the Kim Fox element, right. where she was gonna drop, she dropped the charges. Yes. And that's why I think he did think that he could get away with it because he has been probably coddled his whole life why he took the stand mm -hmm. because he just thought that he could get away with it because he has before. Yeah, exactly. Well, we'll see what happens next. He's gonna appeal it and he thinks he's gonna get off, but uh, who knows? We're gonna get the, uh, the brothers on though. <laughs> Just for workout tips. <laughs> Just for workout tips. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.